So we're walking on a glacier right now. There's ice under all these rocks. So Everest, just behind there, around this area, base camp, that away. Good morning guys, today is the big day. We will be going to base camp. The weather's looking great, so I think it's gonna work out for us. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> There's actually a lot of sick people in the group diarrhea and various other illnesses. Basically everyone's got some form of cold, but you know, it's worth it. As you can see, we're closing in on base camp. If you've been following this series, you would have remembered that I was talking about we were going to climb Kalapatar, which is a mountain opposite Everest. Somewhere between 5,600 and 5,700, I think. All the signs up here say it's 5,500 and something, but I checked the actual stats online and apparently it's a lot higher than that. Well, not a lot, but a few hundred meters. You can hear avalanches up there. It's a big glacier up here. Yeah, the avalanche is coming down. Incredible. Last time we saw some over here. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can, but it's amazing. Force of nature. So yeah, we're going to climb that tomorrow in the morning at sunrise, like I did two years ago. But I was talking to the guide and he said it will also be beautiful at sunset because the light reflects off Everest itself. So the plan at this stage is that we're going to climb Kalafata tonight and apparently I'm the guide because our guide BK he was saying that he's going to stay at the lodge with the people that don't want to go up the mountain and uh, I'm going to be the guide <laughs> apparently because I've done it before or something that's cool never been a mountain guide before see how it goes should be fun take you guys along with us and the views from that mountain are seriously out of this world we'll see what happens and in the meantime check out some of the scenery. We're going to stop at a lodge up here, drop our stuff off and then continue on to base camp. So it should be cool. There's some of the group down there. But I'm in the sun. All I really need is some enlightenment. All I receive is what you give to me. All I really need is some enlightenment. If you're wondering about the color of the sky, see how blue it is? See how deep that blue is in the sky? I think that's because, you know, we're higher in elevation, so the sky turns a bit darker, maybe closer to space. I don't know if I'm just talking complete rubbish, but that's my kind of assessment of the whole thing. When I was here two years ago, this whole area was covered in snow. I did it in March. Right now it's October. I'm pretty sure I, yeah, I talked about this yesterday, but it's super cool to see landscapes in different times of the year because it completely changes everything about the whole place. All I receive is what you give to me I don't want you tripping and falling in pitfall with anyone <laughs> What's his name, Kat? Oh, I don't know. You got a looks, name, man. Looks like Jeff. 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 <laughs> yeah. Looks like Bear. Yeah, he does look like a big old bear, doesn't he? Look at the Dalai Lama in there, not <laughs> he seems pretty placid. What are your thoughts of the Chinese government? What do you have to say about this view? This is really awesome. I'm proud of my country. What's happening with the other with the rest of the group? Elizabeth, she had a headache. Hope 
everything will be good, fine. Yeah, some people are suffering quite bad in the altitude. Fingers crossed that they don't have to get chuffed out. But there's 24 people in the group, so you know there's percentages and statistics. You know, someone's bound to get sick. It's the reality of it. But hopefully, it's not our group. Obviously, Let's see what happens. Look at this, though. Base camp. Avalanche. Kind of stopping now. Just a white path. Avalanche. It's still kind of rolling. That's Everest. So this mountain here, this big one, is called Nobshi, and then you can just see a glimpse of Everest behind it. It looks a lot smaller. It's like there. But yeah, we'll get a much better view of it later. All right guys, so we just stopped in and had some lunch and now we are heading to base camp, the final stretch. It should take around two hours to get there. This is Kalapata here, but we're not sure if we're going to climb that tomorrow or tonight, but we'll see after base camp what happens. This is our group walking behind us, you can see. This one. <laughs> So you can see these huge glaciers all along here and then down in the valley there is a huge glacier that runs the whole way along to base camp. Base camp itself actually sits on the glacier and they have to move the exact position of base camp every year because the glacier shifts due to weather pattern changes etc. It's actually quite dangerous on some parts of the glacier. It's very bright. Everest is like behind that cloud. You can't actually see it from base camp. We'll be able to see it when we go up this mountain, whether that's today or tomorrow. We'll see what happens. What do you have to say about this view, Jose? It's stunning. It takes my breath away. It also might be the altitude. <laughs> One or the other. What have you got in your bag that you're going to do something with at the base camp? I've got an Everest beer. We're going to crack that open. Nice. Crack it open for the boys. Looking forward to it. So we're just making the descent into base camp. Base camp's over there, but there's like no tents out at the moment and it moves every year, like I was saying before, because there's no climbers at this time of the year doing the summit. Almost there. All right, so we're walking on a glacier right now. There's ice under all these rocks. Congratulations everyone. The guy who made it. Uh, made it possible. 
Alright guys, made it. Here's the sign. Base camp's like somewhere around there. It's only once a year that they summit. When I was here in March two years ago that you could see the tents and everything, but they're not here at the moment. You can see this kind of like ice fall here. It goes up. That's where a lot of the deaths actually take place, just at the very start. And to climb to the top of Everest, you have to go up and down this ice fall many, many times to acclimatise. So yeah, if you want to climb Everest, you go up this valley, around the corner, and the Everest is up there. It's a bit cloudy, but hopefully when we climb Kalapatar, we can see it. Fingers crossed. It's just amazing though. I highly recommend. So we're at base camp and Jose here has got the Everest beer. Travel all the way from America, families from Dominican Republic. And I gotta represent, gotta go open a cold one for the boys. Woo! <laughs> you got some on my lens. It tastes like crap. <laughs> but worth it. Delicious. Anybody wanna sit? Sure, I'll try some. <laughs> Not nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice. I'm not expecting it to be nice. Well, it's out of date, isn't it? That's a lager. <laughs> Makes it worse. It's a lager one. It tastes too bad. And last but not least, <laughs> Snickers <laughs> bar. I mean, consider it. Let's see how good this baby tastes. Mm. I'm reborn. Alright guys, it's super chilly up here, so I'm going to head down. I think we're going to do Kalapata tomorrow. Hopefully the weather holds on, because right now I can see a little bit of rain. Actually snow. We'll see what happens. But yeah, that's base camp. So, made it. For the second time. Stoked. Have to navigate across these rocks. Up there. Back. See you there guys. Alright guys, so where I was just pointing, way in the distance, is base camp. We've been back for a while, a few hours now, and I had a little something to eat. It was zero degrees before and that was at like 3 o'clock, and now it's getting on 5. It's super cold, I'm gonna get into bed with like all my stuff on just for like an hour before dinner. Amazing experience nevertheless, you know. You do these kind of things and you forget about the the hardships. Well, you don't forget about them, but you put them down to that experience, you know, and they're always worth it, you know, in the end. I highly recommend to do this, or any trek in Nepal, really. It doesn't have to be Everest Base Camp. Everest Base Camp's just popular because it's Everest Base Camp. <laughs> but there's so many treks in Nepal. In my future on YouTube, I'm going to be making a lot of videos here in Nepal. I still do have heaps of time after this trek in this country, I'm going to be making videos. But just thinking into the future, you know, there's just so many opportunities here and I love it. The people, the people here are amazing. You know, in a lot of countries, well, especially in Western countries, you get a lot of kind of like the, the macho man thing, but it seems in Nepal that you don't really get that. And I don't know if it's because they actually are like extremely tough because they carry like doors on their back up a mountain or if it's just the way of life here. But anyway, made it to base camp. Now we're back at around 5,100 meters ish above sea level. Hopefully I'm going to go up Kalapatar tomorrow. That's the mountain that you can watch the sunrise come over Everest, but it really depends on a few factors really. It really depends on the weather because if it's cloudy then there's not really much point because you can't see anything. It's cloudy right now but it is a full moon tonight so I'm hoping that it stays clear. But yeah, amazing day, big day, very tiring day. A lot of people are suffering big time. It's uh, pretty intense, you know, there's a... Uh, you can just, you, you start to see it in people's eyes, you know. You start off the trek and everybody's like, you know, happy and very sociable. And they're still like very sociable now but towards the end of the trek you can see in their eyes they're like, oh, 
but yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but I think you understand what I'm saying. It's a really interesting kind of experiment to put people in this kind of environment it's such a raw and, and real environment, you know? Like, humans aren't meant to be up here. Well, not, like, not not me, per, like, not my ancestors, you know what I mean? The people that live up here, they have an extremely high can of red blood cells. That's why they, they're able to live up here so well. No issues, really, because they've been living here for years and years and years. If they were to go down to, like, sea level, they'd be super fit. It's pretty fascinating. Super interesting to see what BK, our guide, was saying today, that we could see Tibet. Three kilometers from base camp is Tibet. It's so close. I really want to go to Tibet. I'm going to go there in the future. Altitude sickness is funny. It affects everyone differently. I've got a bit of a headache and like I just feel, I don't know, like kind of like my inhibitions are lower, floaty, and I can just like talk a bunch of random stuff. Like obviously you're listening to me ramble right now. I just feel like I'm excited and I feel relaxed and I'm ready. That's my experience with it anyway, but it affects everyone differently. So yeah, we will see you tomorrow. Hopefully we get to climb that mountain. Fingers crossed, see what the weather's like. And if we are, we will be leaving extremely early. We'll be leaving at 4 o'clock, straight up, to arrive at the summit at 6 to watch sunrise. But see what the weather's doing. We made it to base camp though, so that's, that's number one, right? Thank you so much for watching, and good night. All I really need is some enlightenment All I receive Is what you give to me All I really need Is some enlightenment